Mom, where is the car? What? I quickly checked our home's key case and found that only the minivan key was missing. Anita, on the other phone line, laughed mockingly and dropped a bombshell. Because I borrowed it, of course, it's not at Helen's place. What? Immediately I responded. That car isn't mine, you know? Huh? My name is Helen Miller. I'm a housewife with one daughter. We moved to this town to coincide with my husband Mark's business trip. We are what you would call a transfer family, something quite common for us. Being in a new place always makes me nervous, especially about getting along with the neighbors. But the people here were kind and treated both me and my daughter Ava really well. In kindergarten, Ava seems to have already made friends chatting excitedly every day with great energy. It looks like we'll manage fine this time too. At that time, I had no idea what was to come. Sorry, Helen, for borrowing the car. It's okay. I was just thinking of going shopping. Today, I went shopping at a department store a bit far away with a local mom friend. The department store had a great selection, but it was a bit inconvenient to get to by public transportation. Much easier by car. When the topic of wanting to go there came up since I wanted to go, I suggested, why don't we go together? I can drive. We have a minivan at home. Mark said it would be handy to have. He prepared it for me. It's mostly for family use, but Mark has his own car, so I usually drive it. It's a pretty nice minivan and my neighbors have said, admiring it, nice car. Helen, you went to that department store the other day? Lucky. Somehow, this minor weekend detail leaked out and one day, another mom friend, Anita, asked me about it. She's bright and lively and was one of the first mom friends to talk to me when I moved here, but to be honest, I find her difficult to deal with. At first, she was really nice and even showed me around town, so I felt obliged to return the favor a few times, but as we talked more, she increasingly brought up money matters. See, my husband has a decent position, but his salary is so-so. Oh, really? But having a position is impressive, I think. You think? Well, he's quite young for his position. <laughs> oh, and this bag, he got it for our anniversary. Cost like $2,000. Uh, that's nice. He sounds wonderful. What does Helen's husband do? Oh, he is in a specialized field. Wow, that sounds tough. Our conversations often felt like she was looking down on me and I kept trying to flatter her. Not just that, she would even comment on people's clothes and accessories and talk behind their backs. That person always dresses so plain. Changing my initial good impression of her, so when she suddenly asked me, I just smiled wryly and said, Yeah, I really wanted to go. But it's hard to get there, right? How did you manage? Uh, I went in my car? Wow, Helen, you can drive? Hey, can you take me next time? I hesitated to respond to her forwardness. Once I agree, she will likely ask again in the future. But I was overpowered by her insistence, and I found myself saying, Well, if I'm free sometime, really? Promise! She left quickly after that, but then immediately messaged me. When are you free? I replied, confused. I'm not sure about my schedule right now. But she kept asking every day. So, what about your next day off? I am asked by her almost every other day. Reluctantly, I said, maybe next uh, Sunday. Eventually, I ended up taking Anita to the department store on Sunday where her overbearing behavior continued. Hey, let's go there next. Uh, sorry, I need to get going soon. What? We have barely had fun yet. Even though we had been there for about five hours, Anita was not satisfied and kept complaining. I wanted to stay longer, but I had things to do at home and Ava would be back soon, so I couldn't just go along with Anita. Sorry, Ava will be home soon. Ah, uh, fine, but you have to take me next time. Ah, uh, Anita, I can't do it every time. What? Such a nice minivan, it's a waste not to use it. You bought it to go out, right? Well, first of all, your outfit for the department store, honestly, you could do better. Anita frustrated that we had to leave early, spend the entire ride back criticizing my appearance and gossiping about other mom friends. My silence must have encouraged her because she started visiting my home frequently. Initially, I thought she was after the car, but her behavior escalated and eventually... My foot hurts today. Can I borrow your car? She said. I couldn't lend her my car and I thought she had one too, so when I refused, she complained. What's the big deal? It's just for a little while. And then she left grumbling. This continued over the weekends. There was a piano recital for Ava's lessons. 
Since some of Ava's classmates from kindergarten also attended the piano school, which was a bit far, I suggested, should I drive us there? I wanted to repay the kindness I received from the mom friends. Hearing my offer, they looked surprised and said, are you sure? You know, uh, not that I believed it, but Anita said that Helen finds it annoying to drive for kindergarten events and only does it because she's asked by mom friends. Really? I didn't believe it, but I thought it might be a burden. Apparently, Anita spread rumors about me not lending my car as retaliation. I explained the situation and apologized if I had made the mom friends uncomfortable. Helen, you don't need to apologize. To which they responded. Really, I don't mind driving everyone. We are all headed to the same places and I want to get along well. I'm truly sorry. We are sorry too for being swayed by rumors. Thanks for always helping. I was relieved the misunderstanding with the mom friends was resolved, but Anita's actions scared me. If not for this incident, we might have remained distanced. I felt like just a convenient source of a car to Anita. From that day, I kept my distance from Anita, and it seemed the other mom friends did the same, but I had no idea this would escalate into something bigger. Mom, where is the car? Uh, what? One day, when Ava and I planned to go to the mall, Ava rushed to the garage only to find the minivan missing. Usually, I would know if Mark took it, as he visits when he leaves the house, but he had been on a business trip for the past few days. When I took the key case, only the minivan key was missing. No way. Feeling a burglary, I immediately called the police. The police arrived quickly and looked into the area's security cameras, but our garage was in a blind spot. They said identifying the thief might take more time. I called Mark, who said, I'll come home right away. Our outing was cancelled, leaving Ava and me disappointed. The next day, a holiday, we decided to bake at home, which cheered Ava up, but I couldn't shake off the anxiety and fear about the stolen car. Then Anita called my phone. I was busy discussing the car situation with Mark. Sorry, Anita, I can't talk right now. Oh, about the minivan? Her sudden knowledge of it startled me. I was hooked. How do you know about that? Over the phone, Anita laughed mockingly and said something shocking. Because I borrowed it, of course it's not at Helen's. Confused and shocked, I managed to ask, what? How could you say that? How did you even get the keys? Then I remembered yesterday's tea party. It wasn't my idea, but Anita's. We had a small gathering of mom friends at my house to discuss a class event. Uh, I need to use the bathroom. I recalled Anita going to the bathroom. She did seem to be gone for a while, but how did she know where the keys were? My mind was too scrambled to think clearly. Was it during yesterday's tea party? <laughs> yeah, duh. With such an obvious key case, it's like you were asking me to borrow it. I can't believe it. That's theft. Huh? It's your fault for not letting it to me. Anyway, I'm on a trip and won't be back until the weekend, so I'll return it then. That's not okay. But Anita abruptly ended the call, saying, Bye then. I was speechless at the sudden turn of events. Though relieved the car wasn't gone for good, I was stunned that a mom friend would do such a thing. I explained everything to Mark, who said with a wry smile, I really want to understand what kind of morals people have. Yeah, being taken advantage of like this is troublesome. Okay, I'll handle it. Huh? You wouldn't want to ride in a car that's being misused, right? I was thinking of returning it to the company soon, so this works out. The minivan wasn't actually purchased by us. Mark's company is a major one that deals with cars. So they provide them for test driving and use. So while the car wasn't ours, we were allowed to use it. Sort of like an unusual employee benefit. But having someone else use it was theft and posed a risk to the company. So Mark planned to handle it through the company. But will the company get involved for someone unrelated? Normally, uh, no, but this case is special. Uh-huh. I was confused by Mark's words, but he just smiled. Don't worry, leave it to me. He said this. We decided to wait until the weekend for the car's return. However, two days before the promised date, Anita called again. Sorry, I had a bit of an accident and the car is totaled. What? I was shocked by her words first. Apparently, she had an accident while traveling. Fortunately, no one else was involved, but Anita had minor injuries. However, the car was severely damaged. Without any remorse, Anita explained, and I asked, You'll compensate for the car, right? Huh? I got hurt, and medical expenses are high. It's tough with just my husband's earnings, and you still want compensation? 
Anita, who started all this by using my car without permission, kept making nonsensical excuses to evade responsibility. She was vague whenever I asked about her treatment costs and the car repairs. When I told Mark about this, she is really hopeless, he sighed. Anita seems to live well, maybe we should talk to her husband? Oh, don't worry, I'll explain to him tomorrow. Uh-huh, again? Mark smiled confidently. Leave it to me. Trusting Mark, I didn't say anything further. The next day, Anita and her husband Eric came to her house. I'm deeply sorry for my wife's behavior. I've also troubled the division manager, and I apologize. And that's why, if you overlook it, it's all good. You don't seem to have any remorse. Surprisingly, Anita's husband turned out to be a subordinate in Mark's company. Though he held a position, as Anita said, Mark was a division manager, a rank above him. The division managers rotate every few years, and by chance, Mark became Anita's husband's superior after a transfer. Once Mark learned that Anita's husband was a subordinate, he tried to make contact at work. Consequently, this whole incident came to light. Anita had been falsely claiming that the accident was my fault. She said she was just a passenger in my car and demanded leniency for that. When Eric learned the truth, he was furious and immediately brought her to apologize to us. We'll definitely compensate for the car. I'm terribly sorry for the trouble caused. I'm not angry at you. It's Anita who needs to apologize. Uh, Anita, lost for words, suddenly became defensive and started shouting. I didn't know Helen's husband was a division manager. You've only recently moved here, right? Don't tell me you're lying. Hey, Anita. Besides, with a minivan like that, Helen must be rich. A little generosity wouldn't hurt, right? I immediately interjected. That car isn't mine. What? That car is provided by our company. It's not ours. It's a special vehicle for the company. What do you mean? Then our family too? It's a part of a special study at my company unrelated to his department. It's a company's car, not ours. So a settlement is out of question. Since you have no intention of compensating, we're thinking of suing through the company. What? Her face turned pale, realizing what that meant. Mark then confronted her. What you did is unmistakably theft. You sneaked into our home, stole the keys, and used the car without permission, even damaging it. That's beyond common sense. We'll discuss this with the superiors and consider the consequences. Wait, what's going to happen to me? Anita clung to Eric, but he, fed up with the whole situation, pushed her away. Anita, I can't deal with this anymore. We'll discuss our future at home. What do you mean, our future? Division manager, Mrs. Miller, I'm truly sorry. We'll compensate for the company car. All right, we'll discuss it at the office later. Eric dragging a loudly protesting Anita apologized multiple times as they left. The neighbors, surprised by the commotion, came out and whispered among themselves. Mark, with a wry smile, shared more details. Eric, an excellent subordinate, often expressed his home troubles at company drinks. When I mentioned his name, Mark realized Eric was married to Anita and had been looking for a way to help. Reluctantly, Mark said this incident might change their relationship. Indeed, the company billed Anita for the extensive repair costs, which she ultimately agreed to pay. Eric decided to divorce Anita after this incident. Despite Anita's pleas, he contacted her parents, explained everything, and they took her back home. Anita's parents are quite serious people. They initially covered the repair costs and Anita is now working to pay them back. Eric, who was not at fault, was not dismissed from his job and continues to work diligently under Mark. As for me, my relationship with the other mom friends has grown closer since the incident with Anita. It must have been tough, they sympathize, saying. Those who had misunderstood also apologize. Sorry about that. They now understand that all the rumors Anita had spread were lies. Mom, I'm leaving. Okay, have a good day. Relieved by the return of peaceful days, I'm determined to continue supporting my family as a housewife.